So welcome everyone to TAM lab number 23. Um, today I'm going to be going through a deployment of vRealize operations and vRealize log insight via vRealize suite lifecycle manager or uh, LCM. Uh, today is May 30th. So with that, I don't have much of an agenda. Uh, it's gonna be very uh, hands-on and, and we'll just kind of jump right in here. So real quick before we do that, these are our social channels from a TAM lab perspective. So if you wanna get more involved, please check out our SharePoint site. The link is down on the bottom right there. Uh, also, if you have an idea for an upcoming session or you're interested in hosting a session, we're always looking for folks to help uh, host sessions. Go to our SharePoint site, and on the left side, there is a link to submit an idea, and that'll open up a form, so you can submit that there. Um, just as a reminder, as we go through this today, these are meant to be real interactive, so if you've got comments or questions, uh, feel free to put it in the chat or just unmute yourself and speak up, and uh, we'll make it uh, as interactive as possible. And then one last slide here. Just as a reminder, uh, when we're done with the session today, you should be redirected to a survey uh, as a post TAM lab survey. And it's just a one question survey. So we'd appreciate it if you wouldn't mind filling that out. Uh, it just kind of helps us make sure that we're, we're successful and we're doing things right. So with that, I will kill the PowerPoint here and I'm gonna jump right into it. So what we're gonna be doing is, first off, I'm gonna deploy a lifecycle manager appliance. And from there, I'll do some uh, initial config. And then hopefully we should be able to get to the actual steps to provision both VROPS and Log Insight. We, I'm certain we won't have enough time to actually watch it complete, just because it takes a long time for it to deploy all those components and, um, you know, we'll just run out of time, but we can absolutely go through the steps to to do it how you would do it in a in a production customer environment. Uh, these will not be single node instances; they're going to be multi node, so kind of more of a production look and feel, right? So, but with that, uh, first off, I'm going to start by deploying a new lifecycle manager appliance. I have all those downloaded already. Uh, this is the latest version. I forget what it is, 2.1 or something like that. Yeah, 2.1. Put that in my vRealize folder. And that's going to go in my prod cluster. This lab is probably going to be more of uh, an overview of how to deploy and do an initial configuration of Lifecycle Manager than it is VROPS or Log Insight. So when you're deploying this, you have the option to enable the content management uh, components, which is essentially uh, code stream or what we used to call Houdini, which was the ability to move content from one environment, let's say VRA, right, all your blueprints and stuff, uh, and move it to a different environment. Um, when you do turn that on, it's going to add more resources, so more vCPUs. So I'm just going to leave it disabled because we're not going to get into that here. You can always turn it on after the fact, but you just kind of need to resize the appliance. Uh, we're going to choose our network. And then we're going to go through the network settings here. This is space separated. I always use those four NTP uh, DNS records there. So for the certificate, it's just I'm just going to use uh, name. Then what's interesting here is the domain name servers or DNS. This is comma separated, so not space separated. So make sure you check for that. I think it's 
38. Yeah. All right. And we'll kick that off. This will take just a couple minutes. And while we're waiting on that, I'm going to log into my domain controller here just to show all the DNS records that I've created ahead of time. So here's what we've got. Hopefully you can see this. Um, I've got three, well, actually two nodes for VROPs, a master and a replica. That's what we'll be deploying. I also have this IP here, which would be a VIP uh, for a third party load balancer. And you definitely want to load balance those two for any user traffic, so user interface traffic, as well as any EPOPS agent traffic, if you're using EPOPS. Um, so this will unfortunately be uh, a separate step you'll need to do after we deploy everything through uh, Lifecycle Manager. With Log Insight, I'm deploying three nodes, a master and two workers, and then also I've I've identified an IP for the, the VIP of that, which is an integrated load balancer, which is part of Log Insight, so I don't need to do a third-party load balancer there, like a NF5 or a Netscale or NSX or something like that. And then I've just got the one Lifecycle Manager appliance here. So, so all those A records have already been created here, so we should be good to go. And we're at 80%. So it shouldn't take too much longer. Um, just as a heads up, if you want to leverage Lifecycle Manager with your customer, they do need to own the vRealize suite. So they can't just own vROPS, for instance. right? It, it does come part of the suite. But it's a great tool for deploying and managing you know, VRA, vROPS, Login Site, VRNI, uh, VRBC, all those products, and then you can uh, you can import them as well if you've already got them deployed and now you want to decide you've decided you want to start using lifecycle manager you can import them into an environment so you don't have to redeploy or anything like that and it's able to manage it and then you can do you know upgrades lifecycle management things like that so almost done but we can see the appliance itself uh, is deployed with two vCPUs and 16 gigs of memory. That is, I've found to be somewhat overkill, but if you're doing a lot of things at once with it, uh, you may need that, that amount of memory. But for a lab, you can probably scale that back if you want. All right, so that finished. I'm gonna power it on, and we can watch it power up. It should only take a moment to do its initial config here, get its IP address. And then we'll be able to log in and, and start some configuration. All right, so that's finished. I'm going to browse to that URL. I'll accept the cert. And the, the username is going to be admin at localhost. Oops. And the password by default, right out of the box, is just going to be all lowercase VMware. And then it's going to want to change that. So I'm going to use our typical VMware one bang. Update that password. And then upon initial login, you're going to get uh, a little bit of a, a tour that you can, you can go through here if you want to do that. I'm going to close out of that. Uh, all right, so we've got this deployed. 
So a couple things first that I want to do is number one, if you come into settings, system administration, and then SSH here, uh, I'm going to want to turn that on. You don't have to do this. I do it because Lifecycle Manager has the ability, if you go down here to, I think it's product support, my VMware, you can put in your my VMware credentials and it will go out to the my VMware portal and download products. Right, so any new versions of any of the Be Realized suite, it'll it'll go out and automatically grab those, as well as any licenses that you have in there. You can, it, it can automatically connect and, and show you licensing. I don't have a My VMware account that I can use, so I'm going to turn on SSH so I can upload the product binaries directly to the appliance, which is uh, pretty straightforward. So I'm going to do that first here. So we need to set our root password. And we'll click save. And now we should be able to log in via SSH. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a SSH client here. So I'm using Cyberduck on my Mac. And I want to connect via SFTP with my root credentials. Uh, accept the fingerprint. All right, so now I'm in. So here's the file structure. So what I want to do is just drop those binaries in there. So it's going to be for VROPs and login sites. So I'm going to go into the the root slash data directory, uh, and I'm going to create a folder here called OVAs. You can name this whatever you want. And then I'm going to go into that, and I'm going to upload which I have in my downloads here, both vRealize, login site, and operations. So I'll do both of those. And again, accept the fingerprint. This will take a couple minutes. So while it's transferring, let's go back to Lifecycle Manager here and we can uh, configure a couple other things. So uh, if we go back into, let's see, It is under servers and protocol. Okay, so you come in, set in servers and protocol. We're gonna add some NTP servers. And this is gonna be leveraged for when you're deploying products, right? So this is, if you're deploying VROPs, you can specify these NTP servers to be used for that VROPs cluster, right? So. So four of them here. These can be, of course, internal NTP servers. Uh, I don't have NTP other than my domain controllers. So I usually use external ones. And then same thing with DNS servers. So you're gonna add your DNS servers for your environment. So I'll add both my domain controllers here. And then if you had SNMP, uh, this is more leveraged for if you realize network insight, you would want to add those here as well, but I don't have that today. So now that we've got our NTP and DNS, I'm going to go check on our uploads here. So that's still going. Um, we can go and create, create a certificate now. So I'm going to add a certificate. Now this, this certificate is going to be leveraged for our environment deployments. So this is the cert that's going to be applied to our VROP servers and our login site servers, right? So what you can do is come in here, you can create, uh, well, first of all, let me back up. You can generate a CSR and enter all of your cert details here and it will, it'll create a CSR file for you, which you could then take to your internal certificate authority, right? Microsoft CA and get a signed cert from them, right? That way it's a trusted cert within your environment. I'm not gonna do that today. I'm just gonna add a self-signed cert and that's what we'll leverage here. So um, I'm going to generate a certificate. Uh, the name doesn't really matter. That's just how it's kind of known within Lifecycle Manager. So I'm gonna call it, you realize, 
it's not local. So I'm going to create a certificate that has all the entries for VROPS and LogInsight. That, that way I can use the same certificate for everything, right? You could even do a wildcard if you wanted to, like uh, asterisk.tilkins.local. So you could use this for, you know, VRA, you could use it for everything. Uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to put in the, the host names and the IP addresses of the nodes that we're going to deploy here. So let's do the same thing. Uh, I'm just going to do a, a 2048 bits. And then down here, this is your subject alternative name. So I'm going to copy and paste those here. So these are all those node names that we identified for our environment. So we've got, you know, the VIP here, vrli-master.tilkins.local and so on with all this, right? So that's what those are. And then I'm gonna put in all the IP addresses as well, which is down here. And these are all comma separated. So we'll click generate. And now we've got our cert. And, and that'll come into play later when we're deploying our environment. So we'll see that in a bit. And our file uploads are complete. So now what I'm gonna do is come into product support. And what I would normally do if I had a MyVMware account that I could leverage is I'd put that in here. If I needed to use a proxy to get out to the internet, I would put that in there. And then I would just come in down here and say download you know, Network Insight or VRBC, right? But I don't have that. So I'm gonna to go to product binaries. I'm gonna add my binaries and I'm going to put in a local path, which is gonna be the path that we created. And it's gonna be able to discover anything that we've got in there. So sure enough, it sees the, the two files that we uploaded, right? The OVAs. So we're gonna add, it'll take a minute to map these because I think it's checking like the thumbprint and all that. So we'll give it just a moment. And then we've got just one other step before we can start creating our environment. While we're waiting, anybody have any questions or comments? Any real world experiences? Have you used this with your customers? Hey Steve, this is Matt. Hey Matt. Hey, uh, I apologize, I missed the first part of your session today, but I just question for you. What do you plan to use Lifecycle Manager for in your home lab? In my home lab, I probably won't use it just because I, I, I probably should actually. Um, I, I typically deploy VROPS, I don't know, once every two weeks. I get in there, I do all sorts of stuff, I break it, and then I leave it a mess. And next time I need to do something, I say, okay, I'm just going to redeploy the thing. Uh, I could absolutely use this to redeploy it quickly. Um, and especially with Log Insight, it might make sense to start doing that because when we go through the deployment, you'll see there's some uh, steps within it that you can actually configure it completely to actually connect to vCenter. Uh, you can create affinity rules for the, the nodes themselves. Um, it, it's, pretty, it's pretty cool. It's come a long way since version 1.0, that's for sure. And yeah, I, I guess I could. I, I typically don't do upgrades of products in my lab because I'm, I'm always redeploying them anyway, so I wouldn't necessarily use it for that. If I were doing a lot more VRA stuff, I would probably leverage the um, lifecycle management, content lifecycle management, where I'm, I'm copying you know, my blueprints and artifacts from one environment to another. That way I could keep those and they'd be persistent. That would probably be the biggest use case, but I don't do a whole lot with VRA as, as it is right now. So those are added, we've got those here. Uh, the next step is we need to create a data center. So think of this as a physical data center. So if your customer has you know, a data center in Denver and an, a DR site in, uh, I don't know, Phoenix, something like that, you would add two different data centers here. So we're just gonna give it a name. 
we can call it primary, whatever. Doesn't really matter. We're gonna click, click add. All right, so we've got our data center and now we're gonna add a vCenter and we're gonna add that to our new data center. So we're gonna give it the FQDN or IP, um, a username. I typically just use administrator at vSphere.local, but you could probably should use a, a specific account, you know, create a VRLCM, VRSLCM user account or something like that. And then this dictates um, the, the server type, but I'm gonna do both here because I've, I just have one vCenter in my lab. We'll create submit or click submit. And then it's gonna need a couple minutes. What it's gonna do is actually go query that vCenter and do kind of a data collection of the inventory. So it knows you know, the clusters, it knows the resource pools, it knows the networks, all that stuff. And we can actually watch that process. If you go to home requests, we're looking at that one request right here, but you can see we've got a couple of requests already that, that have finished. But you can always click on in progress and you can see the status of that. Typically takes like a minute to collect a, the vCenter inventory. If it's a larger vCenter, it might take a little bit longer. While we're waiting on that, is there any other comments or feedback questions? Hi, Scott North here. Question for you regarding uh, application for something like uh, a Horizon Suite. Uh, would you be able to use, I'm, I'm not just not familiar with Lifecycle Manager, would you be able to use this tool to help manage the deployment and upgrade maintenance on something like Horizon where you've got multiple uh, applications within like user environment manager, app volumes, and other uh, applications as well? Right, uh, so the short answer is no. Uh, and why, it's because this product is just geared towards deploying uh, the products within our vRealize suite. So it wouldn't manage any of the horizon stuff whatsoever. Uh, however, you may be able to leverage it to deploy a vROPS or a login site specifically for a vROPS environment, right? So, or I'm sorry, a horizon environment. Um, so typical best practice is to deploy a separate vROPS for a VDI environment, right? And you could, you could do that here, so. Um, good segue, actually, because we're going to go into creating an environment now, and and you'll see where that what products we can deploy, and then how you can leverage this concept of an environment, right? So we're going to create a new environment. Um, it's going to be in our Elk Grove data center. That's, a, that's the only one we have. Here you can specify the type, and this is just more for your own tracking purposes. We're going to say this is production, um, but you could certainly you know, seeing yourself having multiple environments, one for dev, testing, staging. That way, uh, if we were using the content management components, we could move content that we've developed in our development environment for VRA, for instance, and move that over to uh, testing and then ultimately production. So it, it really helps kind of with your DevOps lifecycle. Um, so we're gonna give it a name. We'll call this vRealize or production vRealize. Um, this administrator email is going to be leveraged for the products that get deployed. And then again, your default password. So if you are deploying vROPS, for instance, the default admin password is going to be what you specify here. Same with the uh, login site, right? So we want to join the CEIP. So we're going to click next. And now here's where you can see the products that we can deploy and manage, right? So we've got only view realized stuff. We've got Network Insight, VRBC, VROPS, Log Insight, and VRA. So today we're gonna to be going through just Log Insight and VROPS. Typically what I would do is start with just one product because um, if for instance, the deployment fails for VROPS, it's also now gonna fail for Log Insight, right? If you do them both at the same time. So I, I typically tell my customers, let's just start with one. Once that's completed, we can come back into that same environment and add another product. That way it's just a little bit more controlled. Uh, it's not all at once, you know what I mean? So, but today we're, we're just gonna do both. So uh, these will be new installs of each 
we, like I said, we would have the ability to import where you basically just point it to all the nodes within, let's say, a, a login site uh, cluster, and it would, you know, you give it the credentials to connect, and it would kind of pull in the config, and, and then it could manage it from there. So I'm going to deploy the latest and greatest, so 4.8 and 7.5. And then for log insight specifically, do I want this to be standalone, which would just be a single appliance, or do I want to do a cluster? And if you hover over this little uh, information icon here, actually you got to click on it, it's going to show you kind of the differences between them, right? So out of the box, we're going to do three nodes with a cluster deployment. You can add additional ones if you want. and you may, you very well may want to do that in a customer environment based on their size, right? So there's a there's a tool that you can leverage to help size both VROPS and Log Insight, which you'll want to run through to say, you know, how many nodes do we want, how much disk space do we want, that sort of thing. So I'm going to say cluster, and then for VROPS, I'm going to do seven five. Um, there's a couple options here as far as nodes or <laughs> node size. If I go to extra small. I only get the ability to deploy one node, which means I can't click the, the HA option, right? If we go to small, then we can do up to two nodes, and I can turn on HA, so it's gonna deploy a master node and a replica node. If I go anywhere above that, now I can go up to eight nodes. Oops. I'm not gonna do that in my lab, right? So large, we can go up to 16 nodes. Extra large, I guess only six nodes, right? And again, if you hover over these, uh, it'll show size and guideline KBs and some additional notes here. So from, for our sake, I'm gonna do small and I'm gonna do two nodes. So a master and a replica, and I'm gonna specify that as HA. And that's it, we click next. And now we're gonna actually go through the steps to actually input all the settings that we want as we deploy this. So first off, I'm going to read the EULA very carefully with my lawyers and agree to that. Click next. Um, here we, we're we going to enter the license key. If we were using, like I said, the option to put in your MyVM or credentials, you could click this choose key and it would go fetch the keys, the license keys from your MyVMware portal. But again, I don't have that, so I'm just going to end enter one here that I got from our internal licensing team, which is a temporary one. Click next. All right, and now we're gonna get into the infrastructure section here, which is generic for all the products we're gonna deploy here. So we're gonna choose which vCenter we want to deploy this to. I've just got the one. Which cluster, I'm gonna put it in my prod cluster. Which folder I wanna put it in, I'll put it in my vRealize folder. I don't have any resource pools, so I'm gonna leave that blank, and then choose our network, choose our data store, uh, and choose thin provisioning. This, all this information here is what the product collected when it did that inventory with, with vCenter, right? So hey, Steve. Yes. It's Dane. Hey, Dan. I presume if we were talking to real customers, we would advise them to put this in a management cluster. You're just doing it because you've got weird lab things going on? Yes, absolutely. And in fact, that's a very good point because this product has a bunch of different ports that it needs uh, open to talk to all these products that we're going to be deploying and upgrading potentially over their life, lifetime, right? So um, if you can just deploy this in a management cluster and a management uh, layer two subnet along with VROPS and Log Insight and all those other tools, it's going to make your life a lot easier from a firewall perspective. Um, we do have good documentation around that. If you just search for, you know, ports, necessary ports, um, it'll, it'll show it. But if you can just deploy it in the same management cluster on the same layer two subnet, uh, you'll be, you know, your life will be much easier. Um, we also have the ability to integrate with an identity manager for authentication purposes. Uh, I'm not gonna do that today. And um, that is another product you can deploy here. So if we choose to do so, um, you wouldn't do it through an environment, you would do it through the settings, I believe. Uh, but we're gonna, we're gonna exclude that for now. 
And then which NTP servers do we want to use? Since we already input them over here, we're just going to go select, and then here's all the ones we already added. And we're going to say finish. You could add more if you wanted to. So that's, like I said, all generic for all the products we're going to deploy. Um, the one thing I've noticed is you only get the ability to select one data store here. So if you had, you know, a, a couple data stores that didn't have a whole lot of space, you don't get the ability to granularly say, I want my VROPS master to go to this data store and my replica to go over here. It, it's a little bit uh, limited in that sense. So you'd have to deploy it to one. And then if you want to move them around later, you can do so. But uh, just something to be, be aware of. So we're going to click Next, and now we're going to put in some network details. Again, this is uh, generic for all the components. Once we get down to the products here, is, it's when it gets specific to each product. So our default gateway is 10.10.90.1, domain name, path. And then here's our DNS servers that we entered earlier. Click Next, Finish, and then our net mask. Okay, click Next. And now here's where that certificate comes into play. So there's the one we generated earlier with all of the subject alternative names and the IP addresses. You can also do it product specific if you wanted to, in which case you would just click, uh, you know, one for VROPS, one for login site, that sort of thing. All right, and click next. Let me make this full screen here. Um, so now we're gonna get into actually all the components for login site and VROPS. So, Let's start with login site here. So we're gonna start with the node size. What do we want? I'm gonna do smalls. And then do you wanna configure a cluster virtual IP? So we're gonna deploy three nodes here for login site. We can also turn on this cluster VIP, which means it's gonna have a single IP address and a single FQDN for the entire cluster. And it's kind of a, an integrated load balancer, which is really nice. So I'm gonna do that. My FQDN is lab vrli.tilkins.local, and my IP is 10.10.90.50. So it's going to, out of the box, configure that for us uh, as it deploys the product here. Uh, if we wanted to add an additional VIP, which you can do that, you can do that here. I'm just going to do the one. And then this is cool. We can turn on, we can have it automatically create anti-affinity or affinity rules within vCenter, which is a good idea and typically gets forgotten to say, you know, we don't want all these nodes running on the same host, for instance. So now if we lose a host, our entire VRLI environment is down, right? Because I'm deploying three nodes here um, and I only have two hosts in my cluster, I'm not going to do that, but I will do it for uh, VROPS. So we'll be able to see that. And then for log insight, there is a lot of really cool out of the box stuff here. So we can automatically configure it to connect to a vCenter server, which I'm not gonna do because I already have a separate log insight environment in my lab. So I'm gonna uh, not do that because it would overwrite those settings. Um, we can have it configured for Active Directory. So if we have you know Active Directory in our environment, we can configure that so other users can log in. Of course, you can do all these things after the deployment, but it's nice that Lifecycle Manager now includes some of these things as well. Same with SMTP, right? You can point it to your, your mail relay. Uh, if you wanted to forward logs from Log Insight to let's say Splunk, for instance, you could do that here as well. You set your retention notification threshold, so you're gonna get an alert when you have one day left of capacity, something like that, right? You can specify that. You can automatically upgrade these nodes to the latest uh, VM hardware version in your environment, which I'm gonna do that. You may not wanna do that if you've got older ESXi versions in your environment, but uh, something you can do out of the box. I'm gonna always use English. And if I wanted to add more disk, I could do that here as well, which is pretty cool because Login Site, you probably might wanna add additional disks uh, just so you have more log space. So that is kind of the general stuff. And now we're gonna configure our master and our two nodes down here. So we'll go to master. And this is pretty straightforward. 
this is going to be the name of the VM within vCenter, right? So you're going to see it in vCenter is vrli-master. The host name, um, I have these all set as, yeah, just the same name, but with tilkins.local. And then you're going to give it an IP. One, yeah. Then I've got two worker nodes. Same thing here. This is the name in vCenter. Three. Yep. And that's it for log insights. So now we can move over to the realize operations. So we'll click next product. And there's really not much to do here. You can disable TLS if you want, specific versions of TLS. So if you've got some some hard security requirements around that, you can turn those off. Again, you can turn on uh, or you can specify your NTP servers, but we did that at a global level, so it's already set for us. And here I am, I am gonna have it auto-configure an anti-affinity rule within vCenter. So I'm gonna specify, keep them on separate hosts. And in fact, let me check my cluster because I think I did this as a dry run yesterday and I specified that, so it might have kept it after I deleted it. I guess not, okay. I think it took it down. And now we just specify again our IPs and our host names. So this is again is the name of the VM in vCenter. I probably wouldn't use just master and replica. I would do something a little bit more descriptive than that, but for the sake of our lab, this should be fine. Four. Fifty-five, And if you'll notice here, I did create a VIP for VROPS, uh, 10.9056. That doesn't come into play here at all, except after the fact, um, like I said earlier, you would want to create a third-party load balancer and, and configure that VIP uh, just for the user interface traffic and the EPOPS agent traffic. Uh, and typically that gets forgotten. People end up usually just logging directly into the master and then that's fine, but you know you want to you want to have additional capacity for the user interface traffic, so you can load balance that and get more responsiveness rather than sending everybody to the master. And that's it. So I'm going to click next. Everything is good to go. Now it's going to run a pre-check, and these are pretty descriptive, so you can see exactly what these things are going to do. So I'm going to kick that off here, and it takes a few minutes. If everything passes. Then we just get to a summary page where it's going to show kind of you know a summary of all the things that we've specified, and then we'll click submit, and then it's going to actually start building it, which we won't get to see finish here today, but we'll be able to see probably the master and the replica. Uh, no, I'm sorry, the master for VROPS and the master for Log Insight get deployed. It does those first, and then it does the replica, and then it does the worker nodes for for Log Insight. So it passed the first part here. Uh, it checks that all the, you know, we've got the the bits to actually deploy it. Everything is supported and validated. Uh, it checks, I mean, it's got 18 different checks here just for the data part. All sorts of every, everything you would need here. Checks the certificate to make sure the names we've specified from an FQDM perspective are in that as a, uh, subject name alternative or subject alternative name. So just checking that the data is valid itself and then it's actually gonna go check the infrastructure and then everything else. So it should only take a, a minute here. Fingers crossed that it actually completes successfully. Uh, this product also has an API. I forget if I can and find the URL for it. I want to say it's, maybe it's just dash slash API. Yeah, so this is going to show you the Swagger interface for the, the API itself. There's two different versions here. 
and uh, you can script all of this, right? So you could you could automate this even further if you wanted to, and just feed it like a JSON file, for instance. So those all finished. Um, everything checked out. We've got enough disk space. You know, everything's good. So at this point, you can download the report, which is just going to show everything that we validated here which I don't know if maybe you want to save that with uh, the deployment files or something like that. And then we're going to click next. Um, one last thing here, you probably want to download the configuration itself. This is going to be the JSON file. So if you ever needed to redo it, um, Matt, this would be a, a real good use case in a lab, right? If I'm constantly redoing it, I could just feed it the same JSON file and walk away and come back in like an hour and it would be done. Uh, and that's it. So then we click submit. And hey, Steve. Yes. This is Dane again. So, could I take that JSON file and then schedule through VRA uh, a deployment of things like this at a later time? Yes, um, I believe you could. It would have to be an XAS blueprint that would call some sort of a VRO uh, workflow, which would hit that API like we showed. Okay. Uh, but I, I think it could be done, yeah. You could yeah. use you could create a catalog item for deploying a whole environment, right? Interesting. I couldn't do it, but somebody could do it. <laughs> I'm not that good with VRO and all that. Thanks, Steve. You bet. Good question. Um, so now that that's submitted, we can go to our requests here, and we'll see that it is in progress. So we can click on that. And this is going to take probably 45 minutes to an hour to complete. Um, but if we give it a little bit of time, it's going to kind of do a, another pre-validation here, which is redundant to uh, what we just did. But it does that because you could run that pre-check and then click save and exit and not do it for like a, num a month or something like that and come back. And then it would want to you know, pre-validate everything again. So it only takes a moment here. So that's already done. It's going to check the two products, and then it's going to start with the the VRLI master and the VROPS master, which we should be able to see come into our inventory here soon. What is this alarm? Online health. Sorry, I'm getting distracted. But that was pretty much it for the lab. Like I said, we won't have time to see it complete all the way. Um, but what I can do is once the the recording is available here and I post this to the TamLab SharePoint site, I can also take a screenshot of this, you know, just to show that it was successful. Um, and if you guys want, if you think it would be valuable to then maybe schedule a follow-up session to this one where, okay, we've just deployed it with Lifecycle Manager. What do we do next? You know, logging into each product and doing some of our initial config stuff for, for VROPS or log insight or things like that. We can certainly schedule something. So now it's working on the master nodes here and there we can see them already getting deployed, pushing out the OVFs. So pretty cool. Um, that's about it. Uh, the other cool thing while we're waiting here, we got some time. Uh, it does have this marketplace functionality in here, which is pretty cool. So we can sync this. Uh, oh, so you need my VMware credentials. I think you can actually go, I guess you can't. Yeah, I can't do it unless I had my VMware credentials in there, but I've done this with my customer. It's going to go out to our, um, what's it called? The solution exchange, right? So if you go to, what is it? VMware Solution Exchange. Yeah, marketplace.vmware.com. So you can actually see uh, management packs and content packs and all sorts of stuff um, that you can now push right into your environments, right? So if we had a management pack for, I don't know, some EMC storage array and we wanted to put that into VROPS, we can do that. Oh, and we got Bitnami down here now too. That's interesting. Um, cool.
So we can automatically grab application blueprints and push them right into VROPS, or I'm sorry, VRA, right from here. So that's what that marketplace is for. You can download it, and then you can specify which environments you want it to push that to, which is pretty cool. That way it's consistent. It's the same versions of these, these items, um, and it's a good way to test them from dev, staging, test, into prod, right? Um, and like I said, the user management component here, uh, the only way to, to add functionality for like domain users to log into Lifecycle Manager here is to use uh, Identity Manager. So you can't connect this directly to uh, Active Directory, at least not that I'm aware of. So if you have an existing one, you can connect it here or you can push one out. So I'm gonna deploy it to my data center. I don't have that product um, mapped because I didn't download the binaries for it, but that would be how you would deploy it pretty easily. And then you could configure your Active Directory groups and users mapping into uh, Identity Manager, and, and that's how you would control it. So consistent way to do it across all the environments. And that is pretty much all I got. So. We check our request status here. It should be halfway through deploying the masters. Yep, so those are deployed, powered on. And now they're probably in there, you know, doing their initial config as well. Yeah, generating certificates and things like that. So we've got about nine minutes left. Uh, if we want to open it up for questions, like I said, I'll take a screenshot of this once it completes and uh, show that in the, I'll upload it with the, the additional artifacts for the, the session here today. Um, one other thing I'll add, the certificate management pieces, if you wanna generate the CSR and use um, your own certificate authority, I did write a blog a couple months ago, if you wanna check that out. Um, where is it? Right here. Oh, that was September already. Yeah, so if you come in here, it, it'll outline. This was um, version 2.0. Uh, 2.1 is the latest version. And I think there's even some patches for that. Um, but I think the process is still relatively the same. So if you wanted to uh, leverage a, an actual signed certificate within your environment, this would be a good way to do it. So check that out. And with that, I'll stop talking. Does anyone else have any questions or concerns or thoughts, comments? All right, I'll take that as a no. I think this is a great session, Steve. I think the video will be well worth watching again. Well, thanks, Dale. Hey, Steve. Yeah. Hey, De Devil's Advocate. Why would someone not use the VRealize Suite Lifecycle Manager? Are there any reasons not to? Um, probably the biggest reason is they don't own the full suite, so they don't actually have access to it. But aside from that, um, I can't think of a reason why you would not want to use it. Um, even if you've deployed the product separately, you know, maybe a long time ago and you've been upgrading uh, over over time, you would still want to leverage this and import those products. Um, if if for instance maybe it's a small shop and they've just got you know one environment, uh, it might not make sense to do this because you know doing upgrades for VROPS manually is is not that bad. If you've got dev, test, staging, production, and multiple data centers all over the place. I would say absolutely use this because it's going to make your life a lot easier, especially with the content management components. Um, the ability to kind of move that code from one environment to another, uh, it will help a lot with, with change control, for instance, right? Saying that we were able to test it here and now we're moving that code over here. And uh, you know, it's just a much nicer DevOps sort of CICD way of doing it. I think it might be available as a separate SKU. They, they oh. might be able to buy it standalone. Have you looked into that? I have not. That's a, that's a good point. 
if, if you can figure that out, let me know. That would be interesting. Um, Let's see, if we go to, well, it's, it's not there. Uh, once this completes, if we go to environments, we would see that environment here and we could go in and uh, I guess you can see it here as a request. But there's things you can do, like you can export the config. Um, you can turn on a, so a little health check thing. I'm not sure what that does, but I, I think it just kind of manages, it, it just checks to see if, if it's healthy from a, I don't know how, it, how it's checking the health. It might use the, the SDDC health uh, management pack within VROPS, I'm not sure. Um, but you also get the ability here to add products. So you can certainly add stuff after the fact. We'll create another one. I have not deployed VRBC through this or Network Insight. I did do VRA. Uh, once upon a time, in fact, it was a TAM lab. We deployed VRA 7.5 via this tool. So you can check that out on our site if you want to watch that one on demand. Of course, VRA is now at 7.6, but for the most part, it should be relatively similar. So if we come in here, let's filter. I did it, and it was oh, right here. Yeah, VRA 7.5 deployment, uh, November 1st. So you can watch that if you want. That's all I got. Any other last minute items? It's a bummer we don't get to actually see it complete, but uh, it's super exciting to sit here and watch it go through all these little steps. They're pretty descriptive, actually. You can click on all these, and it'll tell you kind of what it's doing. All right. Well, with that, I'll uh, stop recording, and we will uh, end the session.